Electric charges produce forces. We can see that super clearly through all kinds of demos, from sticking balloons to a wall, to making your hair stand up, making water deviate, or causing an electroscope to move. But in physics, it's not good enough to know a force exists. We need some way of calculating how much force we have. How far away do I have to be before the force becomes unnoticeable? And just how strong is the force of attraction between two opposite charges, like an electron and a proton? Just how many Newtons are we talking about? If I put my hand between these two spheres, will it hurt? Will I die? What force am I likely to feel? If we quantify these things, we'll have a much better idea of how one of the four fundamental forces of the universe works. And through that understanding, we can build things like iPhones and televisions, and most importantly of all, this YouTube channel. Welcome to Flip Physics. Today we're going to talk about electric forces and fields. Electric forces are the forces produced by stationary charged particles, like electrons and protons. When a balloon sticks to a wall, what we're looking at is the product of millions of those charges, millions of those forces. But if we're going to understand this, we need to start smaller, down all the way to a single pair of charges. Here's an equation discovered by Charles Augustin de Coulomb. It tells us how strong the force is between two charged particles. Just like how in gravity, two masses will attract each other, two charges will also attract each other, or repel depending on whether it's like charges or opposite charges. In this equation, F is the force between the two charges. K is Coulomb's constant, or the electrostatic constant. It's just a number, it's 9 times 10 to the 9. Q1 and Q2 are the sizes of the two charges measured in coulombs. For example, an electron has a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, and a proton has the opposite charge, positive 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Last of all, d is the distance between the charges, measured in meters. Wait a minute, does this look familiar to you? It should. This equation is strangely similar to Newton's universal law of gravitation that we've seen in a previous video. Here are the two alongside each other. Both of these laws are Butterguen laws, or in other words, they're inverse square laws. That means that if you double the distance between the two things, whether masses or charges, you reduce the force to a quarter of what it was. Or if you halve the distance between them, you quadruple the force between them. So when it comes to distance, charges and masses work in exactly the same way. So for an example of how to use the equation, we could figure out the force between an electron and a proton. We would do it like this, just plug in numbers into the equation. So that's pretty easy, but things get harder when you start adding multiple charges. Here, for example, we have three charges in a line. Note that this symbol is micro. It means times 10 to the negative 6. So 3 microcoulombs will be 3 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. If we wanted to figure out how much force charge 1 feels due to the other two charges, charge 2 and 3, we would have to do a separate equation for each. First, we would have to calculate the force that charge 1 feels due to charge 2. And if we do that, we get a force of 1.73 newtons. Next, we need to calculate the force that charge 1 feels due to charge 3. That gives us 0.49 newtons. Now we have two numbers, so how do we combine them? How do we get a final answer? Well, let's remember that forces are vectors, so we can add up those vectors. Since charges one and two are positive, they're gonna repel each other. So charge one will be pulled left by charge two. Charge three is negative, so the force between charge one and three is gonna be attractive, since opposites attract. This means that charge 3 is going to pull charge 1 to the right. So these two forces we calculated are actually in opposite directions. One is pushing to the left, the other is pulling to the right. So we can subtract them to find the net force, to find the total force. And since the one to the left is bigger, the total force, the net force, will be to the left. So our final answer is 1.24 newtons to the left. But that's too easy. Let's make it harder. We can maybe add another dimension. Let's make this a two-dimensional problem with charges arranged in a triangle. The first step to solving this problem is exactly the same as before. We need to figure out the force that charge 1 feels due to charge 2, and separately we need to figure out the force that charge 1 feels due to charge 3. The force between charges 1 and 2 comes out as 14.4 newtons. The force between charges 1 and 3 is also 14.4 newtons. That's because these two charges are the same size and the same distance apart, so it's exactly the same calculation. So that saves us an extra step. But in this question, they're not in a straight line, so we can't simply add or subtract these two forces. These are vectors, and they're acting diagonally. Since all three charges are positive, they're going to repel each other. Charge 2 is going to be pushing charge 1 up this way, and charge 3 is going to be pushing charge 1 up this way. 
Both these charges are trying to push charge 1 directly away from them. Since these forces are acting diagonally, we'll have to break them into components just like we did in the forces videos. So first we need to figure out some angles. The angles inside an equilateral triangle are always 60 degrees. So this angle here will also be 60 degrees. And since angles on a line add up to 180 degrees, and this is a symmetrical situation, these angles will also be 60 degrees. This situation is perfectly symmetrical, so that saves us a lot of effort and time. In fact, because of that, we only need to break one of these forces into components, because the components of the other one will be exactly the same. These pink vectors will be the same size, and these blue vectors will be the same size. If you use Sokotoa, the blue vectors come out as 14.4 cosine 60, and the pink vectors come out as 14.4 sine 60. But notice how the blue vectors are pointing in exactly opposite directions? If you have two forces of the same size pointing in opposite directions, they cancel each other out. So the net force in the x direction is going to be zero. These pink vectors, on the other hand, are both pointing in the same direction. They're adding up with each other, and so we'll have to calculate that one. 14.4 sine 60 comes out as 12.5 newtons. Since there are two pink vectors pointing upwards, we can multiply that number by two to get the total upwards force. That gives us 25 newtons. So the total force on charge one, due to charges two and three, is 25 newtons up. So, as much as I love mathematics, some of us really don't. Wouldn't it be nice if we could represent the force due to these charges in a picture instead? Well, it turns out that we can. That picture is called an electric field. So, what is a field? A field looks like this, right? Well, let's go with that. Let's say I walk around an actual field, and I take the temperature at different locations in that field, and then I draw a map of that field with the temperature at different locations marked. What I've drawn here is a temperature field, a map that represents the temperature at different locations in space. Now, temperature is a scalar, but we could do the same thing with wind speed and get a map that looks like this. These arrows are wind velocity vectors, representing the wind's speed and direction at a particular location. Another example, if you take a test subject, I mean, a, a test person, we don't do human testing here at Flip Physics. Not at all. Never. So anyway, you take your test person, and this person is feeling really cold, and you move them near a fire. Due to being cold, they will feel an attraction to the fire. So you could draw an arrow to represent how much attraction they feel towards the fire, or how much force of attraction they feel at different locations. You could do the same thing by putting them near a chiller, and seeing the force of repulsion that they feel from that. You know, if you enjoy torturing people. And then you could map how much they want to get away from the chiller, since of course they're already cold enough. We can take a similar picture for electric forces. Instead of moving around an actual field with a thermometer, we can take a positive test charge and move it around in space and see how much force it feels due to the other charges nearby. For example, moving it around this positive charge makes it feel a repulsion. So we would draw arrows pointing away. The longer the arrow, the stronger the force. And the closer it was, the more it would feel that repulsion. And so the longer the force vector would be. And around a negative charge, it would feel an attraction. And the closer it is, the more attraction it would feel, and so the longer the force vector would be. So the arrows nearby will be longer to represent a stronger force. These maps are electric fields, and the electric field strength is defined as the force that a positive test charge would feel at a particular location. There are two ways to draw electric fields, with electric field vectors, like this, or electric field lines, like this. With field vectors, longer arrows mean stronger electric fields. With field lines, the closer the lines are packed, the stronger the electric field. So as much as those pictures are nice and avoid some of the mathematics, unfortunately there is still an equation for electric field. Since electric field is a force that a 1 coulomb positive test charge would feel, we can substitute a value of 1 coulomb into our force equation, and that will give us the equation for electric field, created by a point charge Q. Another way of thinking about this is to say that electric field is defined as the force felt per unit charge, per coulomb of charge. So in other words, it's force divided by charge, F over Q. So if we take our force equation and divide it by Q, we get the equation for electric field. These two ways of deriving the equation are exactly the same as each other. They're equivalent to each other. And again, just like in the force equation, K is still Coulomb's constant, 9 times 10 to the 9. Q is the size of the charge that's producing the electric field. And D is the distance you are from that charge. None of the variables have changed. Just like with the triangle charges problem from before, you can figure out the electric field due to multiple charges by adding them up as electric field vectors. Instead of force vectors, it's just electric field vectors. The math is extremely similar. Pause the video to take a look. All this math is going to take a lot of practice, but the more practice you have with vectors, the easier it will be to apply to future physical situations. Vectors are used all throughout physics. 
The wave vectors work is exactly the same whether it's velocity vectors, force vectors, or now electric field vectors. They're all just quantities that have magnitudes and directions. And just like in 2D motion, the x and y direction do not affect each other. So you always have to break things into components. Fields are super important in physics. It's kind of an abstract concept, but there are so many types of fields. Charges produce electric fields, represented by the letter E. Magnets, or moving charges, produce magnetic fields, represented by the letter B. And masses produce gravitational fields, represented by a lowercase g. We called this the acceleration due to gravity when we studied it, but it's also the gravitational field strength. The Earth has a gravitational field. It also has a magnetic field. And fields like gravity actually distort space-time, making it look like this. And gravitational fields can actually bend the light from distant stars, making them appear not exactly where they actually are. The more we understand, the more we can do. Like firing electrons at a screen to produce a picture like the one you're looking at now. Fields are tools that allow us to understand the universe deeply. And the universe is an incredible place. Thanks for watching Flip Physics. If you like this video, you can press the like button, you can also subscribe or go to the flipphysics.net website. But most of all, don't forget to leave a comment below with your questions, thoughts and suggestions. Until next time, keep questioning.